Hey everybody, Darren Boros here. Today I wanna to walk you through how to legally, yes legally, convert a single family dwelling into a two unit building. I hesitate to call this a duplex because in most municipalities this is not considered a duplex. In most cases, the types of properties that would fit the system for this kind of conversion will still be considered a single family dwelling with a secondary suite. And secondary suite is different from a duplex, but I'll get into that just a little bit later on. Creating secondary suites in properties such as basement apartments, laneway housing, coach houses, or garden suites can be a great way to add additional revenue to an existing property at a reduced cost to creating another legal unit as most municipalities will have different provisions for secondary suites than they have for duplexes and triplexes. I've converted many properties to two unit dwellings with secondary suites and this can be a great way to generate multiple revenues on one property or it's also a great way to start with house hacking. And if you haven't checked out my house hacking video, I'll link it right here. Before we get into our video today, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. If you find this information valuable, you can hit the like button below, which really helps out me and my channel, and also helps the YouTube algorithm place this video in front of the right audience. And now, without further ado, let's get into it. For those of you not familiar with a secondary suite, it's a self-contained living accommodation for an additional person or persons living together as a separate single housekeeping unit in which both food preparation and sanitary facilities are provided for the exclusive use of the occupants of the suite located in and subordinate to a dwelling unit. Or at least that's the super boring definition of a secondary suite on the City of Toronto's website. Oof, I almost fell asleep there. To sum up, secondary suites are basically separate living facilities and even though there are similarities between most municipalities in North America, it's always a good idea to check your municipality to see what kind of rules and regulations are required to put a legal secondary suite in your home. Now, I know there are some people out there who have illegal suites in their homes or in-law suites as they're commonly referred to in real estate listings, but I have to say I'm not a huge fan of illegal suites for a multitude of reasons. Number one, they're illegal. You're not gonna to go to jail for having one, but you can be asked to remove them if they do not meet the zoning bylaws, the fire code, or the building code. How does the city or the fire department know you have an illegal unit? Well, it's usually reported to them by a neighbor, a fellow investor who actually went through the process of getting their suite legalized and knows the additional cost to do so, or the most common one, which is a tenant that is renting the space and somehow, for whatever reason, becomes a disgruntled tenant. All it takes is one little dispute over anything, and if they know or suspect the suite is not legal, the tenant will use that to either get what they want or to make life difficult for their landlord after moving out of the space. The second reason I'm not a big fan of illegal suites is because I value my sleep. And the last thing I wanna do is wake up in the middle of the night worrying about the possibility of a tenant being injured or even dying in one of my buildings because it's not up to fire code or the building code. The third reason is the one that most people don't consider and that's that having legal units helps when it comes to financing. Most banks won't accept revenue on illegal suites because they know that at any point those suites could be shut down. So when you're applying for financing on your future properties, you may not be able to use the revenue you're generating in the illegal suite to offset your expenses and income. So for those reasons and many more, I'm a big fan of having legal suites. If you're curious as to what happens when you do have an illegal suite and a municipality finds out you're operating it, there are a couple of courses of action that usually take place. Depending on the municipality, the first step in the process is usually an inspection by the building department or the fire department. When that inspection is complete, the governing body performing the inspection will either deem the unit to be legal, legal non-conforming, or non-conforming. From there, they will usually ask that a series of actions be taken and provide a timeline for those actions to be remedied. For instance, in a very lenient situation, they might ask you to bring the property up to fire code by adding self-closing doors, interconnected smoke detectors, and fire safety measures such as escape route plans, fire extinguishers, and emergency lighted exits. All of these actions could be completed with the tenant still in place, and the fire department or building department would need to verify that all that has been done before they would provide sign-off. In a more severe and common scenario, the inspector going through the property would require that the unit be brought up to the current building code. In most cases, this would mean removing the current tenant and applying for building permits in order to make the suite legal. In both scenarios, a timeline to complete the necessary upgrades would be given, and if those timelines were not met or the governing body found out that the warnings or recommendations had been ignored, they would issue a fine. In the City of Toronto, fines can be up to $50,000 per offense. 
So if you're renting out your illegal basement apartment for $1,500 a month, it would take you three years to pay back your fine. And if someone was injured or died in your property, you can bet that your insurance company may not cover you, especially if you have not disclosed that you're renting a unit illegally. And even if you are covered, you could face a massive lawsuit and potential jail time. So as you can see for these reasons and many more, do your best to make your units legal. The question then becomes, how do I develop my unit as a legal secondary suite? Well, the first step is zoning. Each municipality has a zoning bylaw or multiple zoning bylaws that will lay out what the allowable uses for the property are. There are residential zones, commercial zones, industrial zones, and so on and so on. Within those residential zones, some areas may allow for secondary suites and some may not. So the first step in the process is to check and verify that the subject property is zoned for a secondary suite. Most municipalities have an interactive zoning map, so it's easy to go online, search an address, and find out the zoning. From there, you can read the bylaw, which is usually linked in the zoning map, and it's relatively easy to determine if your subject property allows for secondary suites. Some zoning bylaws can be complex, so it's often best to just go down to your local municipal building department and confirm which zones allow for secondary suites or duplex conversion. In some municipalities, secondary suites are listed as being a discretionary use, which means that an approval from the city may be necessary. You may have to go to committee of adjustments or a similar type of process where your neighbors will be notified of your plans and a committee of officials will review your plans. In other municipalities, as long as you meet the requirements for a secondary suite, you simply apply for your building permits. If you do have to go to committee and your neighbors get notified of your plans, I suggest doing some community outreach prior to your committee date or your meeting. What I mean by that is knocking on your neighbor's doors, introducing yourself, and explaining what you plan to do is always helpful. I usually deliver a letter to everyone in my neighborhood who gets one from the municipality and explain my side of the situation too. The municipality's letters can often be hard to understand and a little cold and impersonal. So on the contrary, in my letter, I try to make it as personal as possible. I have a picture of me and my wife and then, oh no, wait, I don't have a, a wife. So it's just a picture of me then and a bit of an intro on who I am and what I do. For instance, my letter says, my name's Darren, I'm a professional real estate investor and I've just purchased the property at 123 Main Street. You may have received a letter from the city about our plans to convert the property to a two unit dwelling. This can sometimes be met with hesitation as you may be picturing a future property with a car in the front lawn up on jacks or raging parties until all hours of the night. I can assure you this is not the kind of property that we operate. Our plan is to spend significant amounts of money renovating this property to make it a legal, safe, and clean property. Because of that, we have the utmost intention of keeping our property in good condition and putting quality tenants in place. We have a vigorous screening process for our tenants and a local property manager who will handle all of our day-to-day -day activities for this property. We'd be happy to pass on the property manager's information to you and encourage you to reach out if there are any issues that we should know about at the property. If for whatever reason you would like to discuss our plans or there are concerns about our proposal, please do not hesitate to reach out to me directly via email or phone. I would then leave my contact information and potentially follow up with a door-to-door -door visit if I felt that was necessary. In the past, I've also submitted this letter in my application to the committee so that they can see my intentions with the property and they may be in a more favorable position to approve my application. All of this work would be assuming that your property is zoned for a secondary suite, but what if the property does not meet the zoning bylaws? If your property is not zoned for a secondary suite, you can go for a zoning change, but I will warn you, this can be a lengthy process in some cases. Your zoning may allow for a secondary suite, but your property may not fit all of the requirements, in which case you can apply for a zoning variance, which is a much simpler process and generally takes less time. But there is no guarantee that a zoning variance will get granted, so it's best to acquire properties that do not require zoning variances or zoning changes. The second step in the process after you've figured out that the property is correctly zoned is to submit an application. This can be a simple building permit application, or as I mentioned earlier, you may need to submit an application on a discretionary use. Either way, you'll need to show the municipality what your plans are. In my experience, they'll wanna see a site plan and a floor plan of the proposed area. A site plan can usually be created off a survey of the property if you have one, or it can be drawn up by an architect, a designer, or even you as the homeowner, as long as it's drawn to scale and has all the information that's necessary on it. 
For instance, where the house is sitting in relation to the property lines, if there are any right of ways, the dimensions of the lot and the house on the lot, and the proposed changes you plan to make for the application. A floor plan will show what the interior space of the new suite will look like. It needs to be drawn to scale and will show the dimensions of each room, where the points of egress are, if there are any shared spaces with the other areas of the home, along with any fire safety requirements such as interconnected smoke detectors and fire separations between the units. After you've submitted your application for your legal secondary suite and it gets accepted, now comes the fun part. Well, the fun part for me anyways, actually starting to put the suite together. And the third step in the process is actually building or renovating your secondary suite. I'm going to break down in part two of this video exactly what you'll need to do in order to make your suite legal from the building perspective, such as fire separations, heating systems, egress and entrance requirements, ceiling height, and so on and so on. But there's too much to cover on that for one video, so make sure you check out part two of this video on how to build a secondary suite. Once your application has been submitted and your permits are ready to be picked up, you can now begin working on your legal suite. In my experience, a great first step is to have your building inspector perform a pre-inspection of the site. This will allow the inspector to come through the property and give you specific things they'd like to see in order to complete the project. This can be hugely beneficial as you'll know right from the start what the expectation is and ultimately the inspector will make the final decision on whether the suite gets passed or not so it's in your best interest to be on the same page. As a side note, when dealing with inspectors, do your best to create a good working relationship with them. It's okay to question things once in a while, but I've seen it too many times when contractors think they know more than an inspector, they push back on everything, and in the end, the inspector makes their life a living hell. You don't have to be overly nice or a suck up, but it helps to listen to what the inspector has to say and make the changes they ask for. The inspections that generally need to take place are Foundations, if you're creating a new entrance, framing, rough-in plumbing, electrical, HVAC, insulation and fire separations prior to the drywall going up, and then you'll need a final plumbing, final electric, final HVAC, and a final building inspection. After all of those have been signed off on, you should be issued an occupancy permit, which now means that you can move tenants into the building. And finally, remember to get written proof from your municipality that all permits have been closed off once your project is complete before you move your tenants in. This will save you and your tenants a lot of hassle. And that is the simple process on how to do a duplex conversion. That was sarcasm. And now you can see why some people do it the illegal way. But I can assure you that in the end, you'll be happy you've created a safe, legal suite that is ready to generate income. If you enjoyed the video on duplex and secondary suite conversion, you can hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenvoros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.